What happened to meaning? What happened to people being interested in who I am? How is it that education became so devoid of curiosity? And how is it that this process generally makes me feel so lousy about myself and I'm paying for it? It's a cultural statement about a culture that no longer values the educational process in a way that I think feeds and nurtures people's souls and hearts. I was scheduling my classes, and then I saw a paper on the side, and it said, Consciousness and Creative Bliss. And I was like, I'm taking that class. I always wanted to learn how to meditate. I never really had the option. And when I heard that I'd be able to do it by just taking a class, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Um, and it counts as an English credit. Liberal arts was just sort of an afterthought, I guess. But this isn't just something that I sort of feel obligated to take, like I'm actually excited to take this class. I love teaching so much. There's nothing greater than that experience of, of being with students and learning from them and having them be really on fire about whatever it is that we're doing. And just increasingly over the years, I feel that my students more and more and more are coming to school with so much stress that I can't make that fire catch because they're so preoccupied when they're in my class. They're so exhausted. And I was just so filled with this desire to be able to take real academic rigor with real deep rest and bring that together. A, I think it offers great stress release for students, but it also offers great stress release for the institution. One of the first tenets to catalyzing creativity is putting people under stress. Very few people articulate it this way, but we synthetically put people under pressure. That said, meditation leads you into a place where creativity can really flourish. The idea of it being in the curriculum really did feel so far-fetched and so out of reach. Yet the idea of delivering it as a student activity felt like it would have been a waste of time. Even though we can't see the connections between us, they're hard for us now to see. Remember we talked about this? We're more technologically connected. Our economies are more connected. Our structures are more connected. But we can't necessarily see the personal impact of our connection to one another. We're still connected, okay? And this is super, super important. We are unaware of our connection to one another, but we're still connected. This is why awareness, self-awareness is so important. To become aware, you must know yourself. First rule, know thyself. And to know ourselves, we must transcend our mind. And until we all collectively take off our blinders and commit to purifying our emotionality, then nothing's going to change. This is why meditation is in this class. I think education is the home and the place where we should systematically incorporate silence and a way to get underneath our minds to clear our minds, to create coordination between the 
mind, and the heart so that all of us can operate with increased intuition, which we've already established is simply our most authentic and creative selves. My name is Natasha Guimon, but my friends call me Top. When I first came to Detroit, it was right after high school. I like dyed my hair pink. It was, it was ridiculous. I was just rebelling because I could rebel. And it's like, I'm going to art school. I have to let everybody know how creative I am. I really overestimated how ready I was to be away from my family in the small town. It reminds me of when I was really little and my great-grandparents lived on this place called Wilton Hill. Every summer we'd go out there and I would just exit my grandparents' car and just like start running. And I'd be like, tch, 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 like all the way down the hill, run into the water and like jump in and be like, ah! Then I'd get a bloody nose because it was way too cold, wasn't ready yet. And that's kind of what like coming to Detroit the first time was like. I just I wasn't ready yet. I jumped in way too soon and I got a huge bloody nose. I hate doing things where I can't show something at the end of it. Like if, if I spend two hours doing something and I can't show something for those two hours, I get really antsy and really kind of frustrated and, and bothered. I like cooking because I get to enjoy, like there's a product and I get to enjoy it. I try to spend as much time as I can, I guess, being productive. Having something to show for my time is what's satisfying to me. I think a big reason why I like being productive all the time is um, when I was younger, I was in a car accident with my family and, um, and I lost my family. I lost both my parents and my grandma and my sister. It almost gives you the feeling that you're on like borrowed time. That's why I've never been necessarily like comfortable, you know, with, with being idle. My senior year of high school, I just kind of applied to CCS on a whim. I didn't really think I would get in because I really didn't have the best grades because high school didn't really concern me. My high school art teacher, she was really passionate. She really like saw what I had and would get frustrated at me for like being lazy about it. I don't feel happy unless I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I do need to work on um, anger and stress and like how to manage them because I'm the type of person who lets things like just bubble up and like, you know, maybe six months from now I'll just like explode and then it'll go away. And I just want to be able to manage that better. There's regular old kids going to this school that have a natural talent, a natural ability, and many of them are suffering. And it's been a gradual increase in like severity and intensity. And I think what we're finding with our students is that they're just coming in as the representatives of the issues at large. The majority of students come in with a diagnosis. I believe that there is a time and a place for diagnosing and labeling and treating. However, the way in which we're doing it with young people, I think is startling. Here's what I want you to imagine. Every morning when you get up, in addition to brushing your teeth, drinking your cup of coffee, eating, doing all of your things, I want you to also imagine that you put on a full body Velcro suit. Zip it up, hood, okay? Do you, do you see it, do you feel it? Okay, now you have on your full body Velcro suit, you walk over to your dresser every morning, Brian, and what do you think you do next? You get your dog collar out. How many of you have an invisible fence at home? Has anybody ever put that invisible fence any nearer near you to get that, you know, like the shock that the dogs get for the boundary? Yeah. Okay. So full body Velcro suit. Do you got it? Do you feel it? Dog collar invisible fence. And now you go out and start interacting in the world. What happens? A couple things, right? You get shocked because you cross a boundary, 
a boundary that you may or may not think is appropriate or inappropriate, but you get shocked. So that's A. But the other thing that happens is you start picking up a whole bunch of stuff that's not your own. Stereotypes, assumptions about your identity, your gender, your sexual preference, what you believe, what you want to eat, right? I mean, it's endless. We let the world tell us who we are rather than diving deep within ourselves, feeling our most authentic nature, and coming out and showing that to the world. The first third of the course, we're talking about personal identity issues. So how do you understand yourself through your relationships with your family, with your friends? The second half of the class is about the external mediated landscape. You know, Shakespeare says all the life's stage, right? So who are you on that stage? And how is that backdrop shifting all of the time that you're not even necessarily noticing? And how are you picking that up? But I really leave the meditation aspect of the class up to the meditation teachers. I'm not teaching anybody how to meditate. I'm allowing the meditation teachers to come in and I'm running an academic class. I think that this is a really, a really awesome opportunity. Um, even though I don't know how it's gonna turn out, I guess it could be something that I don't even connect with and, you know, doesn't really do much for me. This tradition of knowledge from where TM Transcendental Meditation comes from is thousands of years old. Traditionally, the, the teachers were always uh, living in caves or monks or something, and so they didn't own anything. So the student would bring them something they thought they needed, like a bag of rice or some flowers or some fruit or something. And uh, then the teacher would reciprocate by teaching them meditation. She performed the ceremony and she gave me like my meditation word, my mantra. Hour passed by and she came in and was like, oh, you know, it's been this long and I think we're going to wrap it up. And I was like, what? Really? Like, I had no idea. I feel like it had been like five minutes. She described it as a, like a cleanse for your nervous system and that's exactly what it felt like. It's a very peaceful thing. It wasn't a physical process, but there were physical results that sort of were way more intense than what I was expecting. Um, I thought that it would be mostly, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize how much the mind would affect the body, I guess, and, and sort of clearing your mind would change the way that you actually physically feel. I felt like um, all these problems that I was trying to work out individually, um, will come together when my heart's in the right place and when my mind's set and clear so that other forces in my mind, the creative parts of me, are actively working things out with all the information simultaneously to help me think of the best thing to do at this moment with my heart and my mind in place at the same time. Yes. So I'm like, so now I'm gonna eat this bagel. I, honestly, I, I didn't know what to expect. I kind of thought, you know, is this really gonna work? I definitely think that I'm gonna continue meditating because, I mean, if I felt like that just after one time, I'm really excited to um, experience that and experience that sort of relief daily. I love TM, but more power to ya if you want to bring something else to students that will help them to grow, to learn, to experiment, to expand. 
that's the joy of teaching, to be innovative and think outside of the box. We have to abide by quite formal accreditation requirements, and I'm absolutely delighted we've accomplished this. And I have every confidence that we're going to see extraordinary results. And what I'm really looking forward to is basically tracking what we accomplish here, because I think we're doing some interesting pioneering work. They need to have a means to be able to tap into the deep resources of their souls to get to that creative spot. And that's why Molly's course is so important. This week is really always the hardest week of the semester. Because there's really no way to define, defend, explain what consciousness is. Hopefully most of you after last week have a better sense that there's something inside of you that's quiet and untouched and pure. And that subjective experience of dipping into that space is really ultimately the best way to define consciousness. I want you all, every single one of you, to leave here knowing less than you did when you got here. <laughs> I can't figure everything out, so I'm going to live in the mystery. But what lies in the mystery of not knowing? What lies in the mystery of emptiness is also the fullness of everything, and that is consciousness. She's so good at momentarily composing this thing, and someone in class would be like, wait, can you repeat that? And she'd be like, are you kidding? You want me to repeat? I'm like, I just spilled my guts out for you. <laughs> like, like, I can't just pick my guts back up and spill them again. I'm a ceramics major. I'm just not a stressful guy. I really don't worry about things. I, I don't find myself doing the meditation two times a day, and that's just because I can't most of the time. But it doesn't mean that it's not like a really interesting and powerful tool. My girlfriend bought me this tool for Christmas. You can like carve stone with. I have this amazing tool and it's so beautiful, but for most of my work, I, I mean, most of the time I don't use it. But then when I find myself using it, it's totally perfect when I need it. So I think that's sort of like how I'm seeing meditation fitting into my life at the moment. I've been feeling a lot less stressed out. I'm discovering the value in, I guess, like experience more than like necessarily just results. It's me sitting there for, you know, 20 minutes not doing anything, but getting this incredible result from it. So that makes me more open to other experiences where I might not necessarily get a physical result, but I know that there's some some sort of worth in that experience. You are creativity in action. How many of you have ever planted tulip bulbs? Do you go out, if you plant them, say in October, do you go out in November and like throw things on them or, you know, play the music or anything? What happens to tulip bulbs? They know naturally what to do. They know when to grow. They know how to be. And it happens spontaneously and automatically with the support of nature. This is what I want to tell you about creativity. 
this is what I want to tell you about yourselves. You're perfect. And any aspect of yourself that makes you feel less than that is an aspect that simply hasn't been fed in the right way. The content in that class allows students to deconstruct what has been fed to them. And I think it's this sense of calmness and connection to self, a consciousness that they really do acquire from the class that allows them to live life in a much more paced and self-fulfilling way. It's revolutionary. It's, it's revolutionary. Molly was real cool and had this idea that we'd do a research paper on ourselves. You know, and I was able to, at the end of my essay, at least say who I am without commenting on, you know, the name I'm called by, the clothes I wear, any of my possessions, my appearances, but the things that I feel like matter and actually create someone's identity. Yeah, no, for our essay, I didn't really know what to write. I was going to talk about how I was mad. I wanted everybody to see, like, that I, I was smarter now and I was, I was more um, level, I guess. I was more even. But then I read, like, the sheet she gave us, like, telling us what to write about, and then I just, it just kind of, like... That's what I realized I wanted to do with this meditation and like with like the lesson she's taught was um, to, that's all I want to do with my life is like to love and like be in love and like love everything. I needed this class. I didn't know I needed it until now that it's over. I just, I couldn't imagine the person I would be without it now. It's the recipe that our students are hungry for. Just a hunger we didn't know we had. So. Congrats. Wishing you life's very best as you graduate and much success in everything you do. You deserve it. once a semester. If you get to that point where you're like, is it worth it? What am I even doing? And you just kind of gotta slap yourself and be like, you can't just give up now. And like I had already started making, you know, right decisions in my life. And then I decided to take that class and it was just, I can't imagine my life not having taken that class and knowing Molly, cause you know, I feel like I've got my head screwed on a little bit straighter now did it and I'm here and I'm done and I can't believe it happened. <laughs> never, never, never give up, guys. It's my pleasure to introduce Natasha Guimont, a major in advertising, to speak on behalf of the graduates. Ms. Guimont. So I remember the first time I heard about the College for Creative Studies. Detroit? I did one of those snort laugh things. I was accepted, got a scholarship, dyed my hair pink, never again. <laughs> I got really homesick. I stopped going to classes. I went home for Thanksgiving, and I never went back. Now, you might be thinking, what? Yeah, it was too hard. One particularly hard day, I made the decision to finish what I started, and I came back to CCS. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Molly Burgard, I don't know where you are. I want to look at you when I say this, but I can't. 
I see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you changed my life. Your capacity for love and understanding are infinite. You've enabled my mind to expand beyond what I ever thought was possible. I am forever in your debt. Come unfold, babe.